Hello guys, nice to see you again. Uh, today I want to talk about people who piss us off and how to use them for our personal development. I'm going to use myself as a prop and I'm going to talk about uh, some examples from my own life. Um, so, you know, it seems that everyone has a type. You know, type of person we are friends with, type of person we like to date, and we also have, uh, you know, the type uh, who pisses us off, or, you know, people we don't get, people we find boring, or, you know, just really don't get very well along with them. But I found out that, you know, thinking about the interactions with these people can bring many teachable moments for us and uh, I'll give you some examples how you can handle these uh, you know these situations and these people you know so example number one you know there is type of people I particularly don't get and these people are people who are very organized very structured, sometimes even pedantic. You know, I find them very rigid. I find them quite boring. I don't get what, you know, uh, what moves them towards this behavior. The thing is that, you know, my nature is quite bohemian. So it's, it's a part I, um, I really miss. You know, I don't have this feature. And, you know, that's the moment when I realized that, you know, that's the reason why I need these people around me, right? It's not about you know, trying to push these people away because, uh, you know, I don't have anything to say to them. They can actually cover for my missing part. So now when I have them around, um, you know, I really like it because they remind me that sometimes we need to stick to certain rules, you know, and uh, it can actually help us and it can make um, many situations easier in the fact. So that's why I learned to, you know, in a way really like these people because, you know, they complete me and I can team up with them and you know the best case scenario is that you know they will do the things I don't like you know instead of me and that's pretty good okay so that's the first teachable moment you can get from this example number two you know people who are um, you know I see them as some sort of trap are people who are uncritically optimistic and even chirpy you know don't know if you get what i mean you know but these you know eternal super hyper optimists now i don't have anything against optimism i like it i i really you know i see it as as a great remedy to many tough situations the thing is that it's very important that even when you're optimistic, um, you know, you can, you're able to admit that certain things suck, right? So, um, you know, for me, the right optimism is, you know, being able to say, you know, this is really shitty, but we can deal with that, you know? And despite this shitty situation, there's a lot of things that's really great and we can still enjoy. Yeah, that's the kind of optimism I really like. What I see as very problematic are people who don't use their optimism to solve things, solve their issues, but, you know, people who use their optimism to cover issues, right? So it actually never goes away and it's still there. And when something comes, 
you know, and, and, and it uncovers the, the blanket made out of their optimism, you know, the whole shit is still there. And, uh, you know, now you uh, might not know what to do about it. So it can lead to some pretty critical situations, right? So what I learned from these people is to really use my optimism to, you know, be able to solve things, not cover them, because that, in the end, might be very, very dangerous. Okay, so this is our second teachable moment today. Third is, you know, these people are also quite tough for me, and I'll tell you why right now. So this is the type Mr. or Mrs. Smarty Pants. The funny, funny thing about this is that I, myself, uh, am quite often Mrs. Smarty Pants, right? So that's when it gets quite complicated. Uh, because when there's more of us uh, in the room, we, you know, kind of start to fight. You know, I know this, I know this better, been there, than that, you know, listen to me, oh no, listen to me because, you know, I know something uh, that's more important or I know it better. And uh, when you spend some time watching uh, this kind of situation, you find out that it's, you know, like a textbook example of a lose-lose situation, you know, because no one's really listening to each other and everyone feels kind of drained afterwards without, you know, really learning anything. So how I used this experience uh, for uh, my development, and you can use it too, is to identify what's really important to you and what you really, um, you know, what you really know, what you're really good at. And once you identify these, uh, these areas, you know, these are the areas where you want to be heard. But, you know, when you're not really sure uh, about the topic or you don't have really strong feelings about it, why wouldn't you actually give the room uh, you know, to someone else. You know, I found out that this way I can learn much more because I don't, um, I don't think about, you know, how to win over uh, the other person. You know, I mean, I'm really listening and, uh, you know, the other person can then kind of leave the stage to me when uh, you know we start to talk about something I might know more things about. Okay? So this is another way how you can think about uh, using these moments with people that are a bit problematic for you for your own personal development and when it comes to it even for you know improvement of your relationships and for their growth okay so uh, I really recommend to you know do this kind of mental exercise for yourself and if you want to I'll be very pleased if you share uh, with me, uh, you know, what was uh, your own personal aha moment. Okay, it was very nice uh, talking to you guys. I hope to see you soon. Have a great day. Bye.